Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use dynamic server system. So first of all, we are going to take a look at the basic blueprints inside dynamic server system. On another video, we are going to use delegates in order to customize the traveling logic and or everything inside dynamic servers subsystem. Okay, so inside dynamic server system subsystem, you need to use two blueprints too frequently. The travel blueprint and the connect blueprint. First of all, your player should connect to the server before being able to travel. In order to connect, you have the option to use connect or to connect with token. The connection is shared between connect and connect with token. Basically, it contains your server IP or your load balancer IP in case you are using a load balancer and then the port. This port should be specified on app settings.json and we are going to take a look at it in some time. Okay, next. If you are using connect, you need to specify your player name and signing key. Signing key, we are kind of going to take a look at it in details in a while, okay? Let's say you want to use your own authorization server. If you want to use your, authorization, your own authorization server, which I prefer, instead of generating the token locally, you can use your authorization server to generate JSON web token. In this condition, you need to use the second blueprint, which is connect with token. You should provide the server IP and port for sure, or the load balancer. And next, you should provide JSON web token. This token should contain two claims, okay? The first claim is the player name. It is the name and then the player name. And the second claim should be the role and should be set to client. The signing key should be uh, the same as the signing key inside app settings.json. And again, we are going to take a look at it and see how we can configure the signing key. Okay, let's say our player is connected now to dynamic server system. Now the player should travel from one map to another. In order to be able to travel, you have the option to call travel uh, blueprint on server or on client. It's pretty much the same. The only difference is the character name. If you are calling it from the client side, there is no need to specify the character name. So now I'm going to take a look. We are going to take a look on the on server travel async. It should be called only from Unreal Engine server. If it is being called from the client side, dynamic server subsystem will ignore the call. We'll consider it not authorized. We have set of arguments that should be uh, configured. The first one is the map name. It should be the map name and the path of the map. So let's go to our project. And if you hover on any of the maps, you are going to see primary asset name. We need to use the primary asset name, which contains the path and the map name. Next, let's say our players are going to team up and want to go to a certain dungeon. So in order to be spawned on the same dungeon, First of all, you, sh you should check is dungeon, and then you should use the same dungeon ID. If you use different dungeon IDs, the player is going to be spawned on different server instances. Now let's take a look at the uh, traveling, in, uh, traveling options. Traveling options actually used to specify where the player should be spawned whenever it is going to travel from one server to another. So you have three options. The first option is none. Whenever you specify use the option none, the player is going to be spawned on the default network player start, which basically is tagged with none. Let's say you want to specify to uh, spawn the player on a certain player start, network player start, you should select tag and then you should specify the tag of your player start. For example, we have here a new network player start which holds the player start tag L1. So you are gonna go and select tag and then set the tag to L1. This way, the player will be spawned on the on this network player start. The other option is, the other options are actually, let's say the last option is to use a coordinate. So we are talking about the location X, Y, Z, and then the rotation around the axis. Make sure to specify, specify the correct Z. Otherwise, the player is going to be spawned below the map and it will be able to fall off your map. It's going to be a disaster. 
okay? So now if we go to the Blueprint uh, game instance, we are gonna see all of our servers. The server actually just contains the server IP and the port. We can have as many servers as we want. Each server could be hosted on a separate location with no issues. Okay, so let's move on to uh, the uh, C++ project. In order to be able to um, use the, in order to be able to spawn the player in a certain coordinate, you need to uh, just copy and paste a small code. So first of all, make sure to override init new player inside your game mode, and then copy this code without any modification. Copy it as, as it is to your project. Then make sure to include the method prototyping on the game uh, mode.h. Okay, so now let's take a look at the app settings.json. Inside app settings.json, we have a lot of configurations. We are going to take a look at it. First of all, the first one uh, is disabled. So for now, it is disabled. If you configure it or you don't configure it, it's pretty much the same. So let's take a look at the Unreal Engine service. Here, first of all, you need to specify your server path. So I have Dynam server subsystem and Unreal Engine servers placed inside the same folder. You need to go to your Unreal Engine server and make sure to copy the full path and then paste it here. For sure, you need to specify your server name. The port here is gonna be used just for dynamic server system to start spinning servers from this port. In case any of the ports is underused, um, it's gonna be skipped by dynamic server subsystem. Now, level array should contain all your levels. Otherwise, the player is not gonna be able to travel to any of the levels that is not included here. Each level contains three things. The first one is the level name with the full path. The sec second thing is the server limit. So basically, whenever the server limit is reached, a new server instance is going to be created for the rest of the players. The last option is the minimum number of instances. You could go with a number between zero and up to any number you want. So basically, if you go with any, one, any, any number above uh, zero, Dynamic Server Subsystem will create a new instance or a number of instances based on minimum instances whenever it is launched and this number of instances will be maintained. It's not going to be terminated even if it is free of players. If any of the servers has any issues, it's going to be terminated. A new instance is going to be created. So this number of servers will be maintained forever. Let's say you specify zero number, uh, let's, let's say you specify zero number of instances. So basically the instance is gonna be spinned up whenever the player requests a travel to this map. So we are not gonna see any server with uh, this map simply because we have the minimum number of instances is zero. But whenever a player try to uh, travel to this map, the uh, dynamic server subsystem is going to spin up a new instance dynamically. Okay, the last thing inside Unreal Engine server is the timeout. Whenever the uh, server become empty, no players on it, it's gonna be terminated after a certain amount of time. And you should specify time in milliseconds. Here I'm going with 20 seconds, but it's not a good idea. You should go with something around two minutes, three minutes, it's gonna be better. Now let's take a look at the uh, connection information. First of all, you should specify the port. And here the port should be the same in your connection inside your game project. And then you should specify the signing key. This signing key should not be based 64 encoded. It should be a normal string. Otherwise, your player is not gonna be authorized. If you have your own authorization server, you should use the same signing key and the signing key should not be base64 encoded. Let's move on to the server IP configuration. Since dynamic server subsystem is designed to work behind a load balancer, so you have here a plenty of options. The first option is 
to debug local. If it's set to true, then I'm server subsystem is gonna use the local IP by default. Otherwise, it's gonna fall back to static IP. If you have just one instance and it has a static IP, you specify the static IP on inside the static IP uh, field. So let's say you have one five six dot something dot something. This is our static IP. If it is not specified, the uh, dynamic server system is going to obtain the IP of the virtual machine by using the API. So here you should create your own IP forwarding server. Dynamic server system is going to make a call, rest for call, and then it does, uh, the, the, the API should return your virtual machine IP. And here I have provided an example for a server I found online and how the response should be. Okay, so now we know everything about the configuration. Let's try to uh, start the next server system and connect to it. Sorry, I'm not going to launch it from here. Uh, I'll go to the files and start it. Since we are using debug uh, locally, so the server IP is set to the local host, and we have two servers launched because we already specified to launch one instance of map one and one instance of map two. So now if you go back to our um, project and then we can open uh, the uh, login map, I'm connecting to the server. We have just one server, which is localhost. Okay, here we go. Now your player is spawned on map one. And if we go back to our server, you can see that Mr. Shaban successfully connected. Now we have the option to travel between a lot of maps or let's say dungeons. Let's say we are going to travel to a certain map and this map is not already instantiated like um, composite map part B. So now dynamic server system is going to instantiate a new instance and you are going to be spawned on it. And here we are going to de demonstrate the dynamic uh, spawning. So let's say you are on a big map. This map is split into multiple zones, server zones. So basically whenever you uh, travel from one uh, map or one server zone to another, you have the option to spawn the player dynamically based on its speed and based on its coordinate. So now we're gonna travel from the, uh, from the zone B to zone A. You can see that our player spawn based on its location on the previous server. And this could be done easily just by, um, if you go back to your portal, calculate coordinates, it should be checked. Okay, I guess that's all about the server system. Thanks for watching. See you in another video.